Okay, so now let's build an intuition for the back propagation algorithm. So, so far we have answered the first part of the question which was how to choose the loss function and we have taken two popular problems classification and regression and motivated the choice for the loss function for both of them, right. Now what we want to do is that once you know the loss function, now we can start talking about the derivative of the loss function with respect to parameters, right? Because that's the quantity that we are interested in. If you know the derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameters for all the parameters on a network, then we can simply plug it that back into the gradient descent algorithm and we are done, right? So that's all that we need to do. But now in the case of a deep neural network, this is, I wouldn't say complicated, but there is slightly more work involved than what we had in that simple network that we had, right? So here's our gradient descent algorithm where we had this and we were just updating the weights using the gradients and we want to apply the same algorithm by replacing these by all the weights that I have in the network, right, the large number of weights and then be able to compute the partial derivatives of all those weights, the same algorithm goes through, right. So now let's focus on one of these weights W112 and to learn this weight using the gradient descent algorithm we need a formula for the derivative of the loss function with respect to this weight, right? And that needs some work as I said, right? Now what we want to do is first build an intuition for how, what would that formula look like and then do some hard work but then come back to a state where we can then say, okay, once I know how to compute this, this red guy, can I compute all the weights in that network in one go, right? Can I compute the derivatives? Uh, the partial derivatives for the loss function with respect to all the weights in that layer once I know how to do it for one weight in that layer, right? Then that would not uh, not require us to compute these many formulae but just one formula and then we could generalize, right? And also not just that, once I know it for one layer, can I do, apply a similar formula for all the layers, right? Then we are coming up with a very generalized formula and the computations will become easier. But that's for later. For now, I want to understand how to compute this, right? So we'll see how to calculate that. But first, let us look at a very simple deep neural network, which is a very thin network, but it's a deep network, right? That means that every layer I just have one neuron and I have just one weight which connects my input to that and so on, right? It just keeps computing. It's a very simple uh, computation. So you can actually write y hat as a function of x very easily in this case, right? Now, it is easy to find the derivative by the chain rule. So what is the derivative that I'm interested in? I'm interested in the derivative of the loss function with respect to this weight, right? And this weight is very far away from the loss function, right? Because it's not uh, very close, right? I would say this weight is closer to the loss function and the weight that I'm interested in is much farther, right? But I know how to use the uh, chain rule, right? So I can compute the derivative of the loss function with this guy, which is the green guy, dark green guy. Then the derivative of the dark green guy with respect to AL1, and then I keep going down, right? And this is something that you have done, right? So if I could write y hat is equal to say sine of cosine of square of uh, say tan of e of log of something, right? Then you know how to compute this derivative, right? And that's, that's the chain. This is a very long chain and you see a very long chain here too. But you know how to compute that, right? You just go about it one by one. You compute the last guy, uh, the derivative of y hat with the last guy that you had, then the guy previous to that and so on. You just keep going uh, in a chain. That's a chain rule of derivative that all of you know. And now I could even compress this chain, right? So I could even write it as this. This is... Uh, just a compressed form of this chain rule and why I am doing this, I am just trying to do this to build the intuition that somehow if I know all of this, right, then to compute this guy, I don't need to compute all of these again, right, I have, suppose I have already computed this, right, suppose I have already computed this, which corresponds to that entire box here, right, so this corresponds to that entire box there, so I can just reuse that. I don't need to compute the whole of it again and then I just need to compute this red quantity, right, so that's the idea that we are going to use in back propagation, that we'll have these long chains and that would make the task daunting. But then we'll argue that some portions of this chain we have already computed and we're just going to recompute, reuse them, right? So it's not as daunting at as, as it seems, right? And now some of you could realize that if there were like multiple weights here and if this part of the chain was already computed, then maybe for all those weights, we could reuse that computation, right? 
If it's not clear at this point, don't worry. This all will become clear as we keep uh, discussing the backpropagation algorithm. But that's the intuition that I want, uh, at least on this slide, whatever is there, this you should understand that I had this big blue part. But if I had already computed that, then I can just reuse that when I'm computing this uh, uh, left hand side here. Okay. Okay. Similarly for W211, similarly for WL11, okay. Uh, now let us see an intuitive explanation of the backpropagation algorithm before we go into the mathematical details, right. So I have already told you some intuition that there is this large network of many weights and I want to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to all these weights. I took a weight which was like very far away from the uh, loss function and I made a case that if you could have a chain from the loss function to that weight and you have a chain from the loss function to that weight, then you could just apply the chain rule, right. So let's, that's, that intuition is already there. Now let's just strengthen it further, right. So this is what is happening, right. You had this network, okay. I gave you an example x as input. You did all this computation because you had some current values of w, b, w1, w2, w3, b1, b2, b3. These are not the final values. These are not the final learned values. You are somewhere in the training and based on your current understanding, current values of w1, w2, w3, you computed y hat l. Not just that, you computed some loss, right. After having y hat l, you computed the loss function also and you got a non-zero loss. So now you're trying to find out what went wrong. I gave the network an x, okay. It produces a certain output. I computed the loss based on that output and my loss is non-zero. So who is responsible for this? So this loss was sitting here. So I will ask these guys first. Right? This is the dark green guys that I'll ask first, right. I'll ask them, sorry. Hey, you are not producing the desired output, right? Because if you guys were perfect, then my loss would have been zero. So why are you not producing the desired output? You should take responsibility. You should do give me better output. But these dark, the shaded green guys, right? They'll say, "Hey, what can I do, right? I what responsibility can I take? But I am only a, as good as the hidden layer before me, right? Because how did I get the dark green guys? These are the dark green guys. How did I get them? I had certain values in the previous layer. I multiplied them by the weights and the biases, and then I get." So this y hat will tell me I can't do anything, right? Whatever these guys gave me, I just computed softmax on that and gave you some values. So if these guys had given me perfect values, then I would also have been perfect. So please go and ask them. So you say, okay, this is fine, sounds interesting, sounds correct, that if these guys are not doing their job properly, then how will the shaded guy do its problem, giant problem, right? So you go and talk to these three guys. Who are the, these guys? W's, H and B, right? So the W and uh, B, so you ask them, what, what is wrong with you, right? So the W and B say, yeah, we understand we have made a mistake because we are the weights. We are the only things that can be adjusted in the network. And maybe we have not really been adjusted very well so far. And hence the output is bad, right? But then HL says that, okay, I'm also a part of this computation, but I can't do much, right? Because I am again as good as the previous activation layer. After all, how do you compute HL? HL is again a function of the previous uh, Guys, right? So it's uh, again a function of what these weights were and what were the inputs that got passed to those weights, right? So then again, you go and talk to these guys. So again, the weights will say that, uh, hey, we are fine, right? Okay, we made a mistake. Maybe we need to get adjusted. We take responsibilities. But these shaded red guys, they'll again say, hey, what can I do? I am a function of the previous guys. So maybe you should go and talk to them, right? And then, of course, you cannot pass the responsibility to the input. Input is whatever it is, right? You cannot say, oh, change your input if you want the right output, right? No, I have given you a certain input. I expect you to uh, give me the output. So the responsibility never goes to the input. But what you realize is that in the entire network, the responsibility lies with all the weights, all the yellow things that I have shown here, right? All the weights and all the biases. These guys, Although they are being computed, they are just a function of the weights and the biases. Right? So the weights and biases are wrong, then these guys are going to be wrong. Right? And this argument flows all through the network. And then you find out that the responsibility lies between the weights and the biases. Right? And this is what I am trying to do. Right? So I was interested in finding the responsibility of this weight, right? the first weight here. But instead of talking to the weight directly, I first spoke to the output layer. 
then I spoke to the previous hidden layer, then the previous hidden layer, and now I am talking to the weights, right? So I have constructed this chain rule because directly talking to the uh, weight of interest is hard, right? Because I have given you that function, remember, sine of, cosine of, e of, log of, something, something, a long chain. If I directly try to compute the derivative, it's hard, right? But instead, if I break it down into this chain rule, it's easier, right? So that's what I'm trying to do here. You're interested in the loss, derivative of the loss function with respect to some weight. You talk to these intermediate guys, find out each of their responsibility, and then find, using those computations, find the responsibility of the weight that you're interested in, right? Now, where did this jump happen, right? So it's still this point, I was only talking English. And then suddenly I introduced this math part. I suddenly came to uh, partial derivatives, right? So how did I make that jump? Why? I want to know what is the responsibility of these guys. So how did that responsibility became derivative? What does the derivative tell us? The derivative tells us is that if I change w a bit, how much does the loss change, right? So if changing w a very tiny bit changes the loss of uh, makes a large change to the loss. That means W has a very strong influence on the loss. W is more responsible for the loss. If I change the W a small amount, maybe the loss will decrease a lot, right? Hence, derivative or partial derivatives is a good way of assigning responsibility to the weights for the loss because it tells me if I change this weight a bit, how much will the loss change? And that's what uh, I want to know, right? How much is this guy responsible? Can I change its value a bit? and drastically reduce the loss function, then let me do that. And that is what the partial derivative tells you, right? So from that English discussion that we had of talking to every guy, we came to this mathematical uh, uh, kind of realization of that, which is that you just need to compute the partial derivatives. And if you want to compute the partial derivatives, then just as we had this uh, detective work that we did, we went and spoke to every layer and then came to the last guy. We just have to do the same thing, which just gives us the chain rule of property, right? So this is what we are going to do in the remaining part of this lecture. The quantities of interest that we have is the gradient with respect to the output layer, okay? The gradients with respect to the hidden units, sorry. And there can be multiple hidden units. And then the gradients with respect to, oh sorry, I wanted to change the color, but yeah. the weights and the biases. Right? So these are the three parts to the remaining of, to the remainder of this lecture, right? We'll first see how to compute this, then this, and then this, right? And we want to do this in a manner that once I do it for W11, I should somehow be able to do for all the Ws, all the weights in the network, right? This formula should not be painfully computed for every uh, weight in the network, right? So that's what we're going to do in the uh, remaining part of this lecture. And our focus is going to be on cross entropy. So our loss function is going to be cross entropy, which means we're going to deal with classification problems, which means we're going to have the output function as softmax, right? So I'll end here and we'll come back and uh, do the entire uh, back propagation in its, uh, uh, in the gory details of uh, the mathematical details of it uh, in the subsequent lectures. Thank you.